program last year and so we were quite enthused by the wonderful response that we got to the program and we had a short break june and july and we have restarted this uh, risk skill up program again this year as i've told you many times uh, there are three important objectives that we wanted to achieve through this program the first was to create for ourselves an opportunity to engage ourselves there are about 76 uh, approximately lcips in the isame area i thought we could create uh, a platform for ourselves uh, so that we can continuously upscale and upskill ourselves but we also wanted to uh, give provide an opportunity for the fdis and many other line traders to uh, have a platform where they could listen participate and upskill themselves finally we also wanted to allow every passionate lion and sometimes even non lions uh, to uh, upgrade themselves on their uh, information skills attitude lionism and all these topics uh, these are the 21 programs that we uh, organized last year and these 21 programs were extremely successful coincidentally uh, past international director and Sunil Kumar was the first presenter last year also, and we requested him to make the first presentation today, so he has kindly agreed. And last year, the chief guest at the first uh, episode was uh, Vice President A.P. Singhji, and this today again, we have another Vice President um, P.I.D. Manoj Shah uh, with us today as the chief guest. Then, uh, these are the programs that are lined up for this year. Actually, the response to my call this year has been uh, very well received and more, we have received many more applications than last time. And in fact, we could not accommodate everybody. Uh, in fact, we created additional slots. We had alternate Thursdays where we had planned this program, but because of the immense response, so I created additional slots. And some latecomers and those who could not uh, fill the form in time, I have kept them uh, on the wait list, and some of them have been uh, asking me to include them also. Maybe uh, we will see if we can accommodate the others also in course of time. So uh, all these programs, every one of these programs begins with reading out the code of ethics. So we made it a point last year also to, instead of the flag invocation or a prayer or whatever, we thought Lions Code of Ethics uh, is very, very relevant to all of us. And that's why we invite people to read out the Code of Ethics. Today, I've invited four Leos from my district to read out the Code of Ethics. All four Leos are requested to unmute themselves and be ready. So I request you to please read out the Code of Ethics for us. To show my faith in the worthiness of my vocation by industrious application to the end that I may merit a reputation for quality of service seek success and to demand all fair remuneration or profit as my just due, but to accept no profit or success at the price of my own self-respect lost because of unfair advantage taken or because questionable acts on my part. Sorry, to remember that in building up my business, it is not necessary to tear down another's to be loyal to my clients or customers and true to myself. Whenever a doubt arises as to the right of ethics of my position or action towards others, to resolve such doubt against myself. To hold friendship. To hold friendship as an end and not a means. To hold that true friendship exists not on account of the service performed by one to another, but that true friendship demands nothing but accept service in the spirit in which it is given. Sorry. Always to bear in mind, in mind my obligations as a citizen to my nation, my state and my community and to give them my unswear, unswearing loyalty in word, act and deed. To give them freely of my time, labor and needs. To aid others by giving my sympathy to those in dis distress, my aid to the weak and my substance to the needy. To the needy. The to be careful one. with my criticism and liberal with my praise to dis to build up and not destroy. 
thank you very much all the four leos because i gave you a very short notice i did not give you time even to prepare so it was a last minute decision to involve the leos this time but you did a great job thank you very much so we are going on to the main program i'll stop sharing this and i once again welcome everybody to this program i think this is uh, uh, the first in the second uh, volume of uh, skill up programs um, so we have another 24 episodes lined up this year actually it's going to be many more perhaps so we'll go on till june uh, 2025 and let's see if we can take a break again and if all goes well we'll start skill up 3.0 next year uh, we are extremely happy today to have our international third vice president manush shaji as our chief guest uh, our third vice president is a very very successful businessman and he is into various sectors uh, he is into hotel industry hospitality he is into property he is into uh, automobile industry he is into finance in, uh, sector and he is i mean multifarious business interests uh, he lives in kenya and then fortunately we had an opportunity to be hosted by him in Kenya when I accompanied our director, Baburao, for one of the board meetings. His hospitality is quite remarkable. Entire family received us and then hosted us and took care of us when we were in Kenya. Uh, he, is a, he was a trustee of the LCIF and also a lead uh, a donor uh, to Campaign 100 and a humanitarian partner of LCIF. Uh, Lion uh, uh, Manoj Shaji, uh, has led almost every important responsibility in Lions Clubs and most importantly because he also is an LCIP. So he had opportunity to uh, be uh, the district governor elect seminar many, many times. He was a group leader, a group coordinator, uh, quite a few times. Typically, this is perhaps the greatest trainer opportunity that anybody gets uh, in Lionism and he had it quite a few times. Uh, he established quite countless service projects in Kenya. So they relate to renal uh, care, they relate to dental care, they relate to um, diabetes, they relate to vision. He established hospitals, he established many, many uh, different kinds of uh, service centers um, in Kenya. And he also has numerous awards. I think it will be wrong oh. if I read all of them, but one uh, recognition, I must tell you, which is a very, very special one, apart from being the ambassador of goodwill. The one recognition that I felt very proud of uh, knowing is that he received Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II presented him the commander to the Venerable of St. John's Medal. So this award came to him from the Queen Elizabeth. I think I don't think anything can be greater than a kind uh, the award that he has received here. And government of Kenya has appointed him the president of the Republic of Kenya as the chairman of the National Transport and Safety Association in Kenya. I think there are too many other things that actually um, uh, I would like to tell you, but because I don't want to take time, we are extremely happy that our second, uh, third vice president, Manoj Shah. Um, another thing, I, I must say this, um, when I sent him a message that I wanted him here to be the chief guest today, I don't know how he manages his time. Within maybe 30 minutes, I think, he responded to me saying that he is uh, ready to uh, spare time for us. I think this is really wonderful. I don't, I did not expect that somebody of your stature would find time to answer. And then you, were gonna, you have been constantly in touch. I think I'm really amazed with your communication, uh, which has been extremely uh, quick. So thank you, um, Vice President, for being our chief guest today. I request you to declare this program as inaugurated and also give his give you a message thank you thank you very much my very good friend uh, nagaraju and thank you for painting such a beautiful picture of me to this august gathering of over 200 individuals and lions who have come together for this second episode of the skills up and thank you for inviting me to inaugurate the 22nd session and the second episode uh, of your successful Skills Up program. Nagaraju, I've been following your progress and to be very honest, I'm very impressed at the leadership work 
the leadership promotion that you have been doing individually and collectively in your part of the world. I've been a very keen follower of you on the social media, and I've also heard that many of your sessions are very, very well attended. So my heartiest congratulations to you, and I wish you all the very best as we start the second episodes of the Skill Up program. At the same time, I'm very happy to see my very good friend, G. Babu Rao, our international director. And thank you, G. Babu Rao, for being here with us and being a strong supporter of this particular program. Tonight, we are all so fortunate that we have such a personality who is going to be our keynote speaker at this 22nd episode, and that is none other than my very good friend, past international director, Sunil Kumar, who is also our Global Action Team Constitutional Area Leader, and he's going to share with us a very important subject, and that is unlock uncertainties. In fact, when I talk about past international director, Sunil Kumar, it only reminds me of a quote, and that quote is, what you do makes a difference, and you have to decide what kind of a difference you want to make. And that is what PID Sunil Kumar is, and that is how I have known him for the past three decades. So Sunil Kumar, we are all eager to listen to you. Coming to this evening's subject matter, leadership development. In fact, leadership development is very close to my heart. I have always been a leadership man since I became an international leader of this association 24 years ago. I was very passionate about leadership development and creating more leaders. And today, when I look at myself as the international third vice president, I can only very vividly remember the hundreds of people that have inspired, motivated, and given leadership training, like what Lion Nagaraju is doing here this evening. And when I see them, in fact, many of them are participating in this Skills Up session, and I feel extremely proud that they've all become region chairpersons, district governors, council chairpersons, and even international directors. And all this is because of leadership development. I am a firm believer that leaders are not born. And that is a fact. There is no way written in any obituary that a particular leader was born a leader. Leaders are made. And leaders are made in a twofold exercise where we have leadership initiators like Nagaraju. We have leadership sessions such as Skills Up and many others. And of course, it all depends on how you absorb the information, process it and use it so that it is to your benefit to make you a better leader. When I look at the purpose and the intent of the Skills Up program. To be very honest, I am very touched because it gives an opportunity to all the Lions who have been trained in LCIP. It gives all the Lions who have been trained as FDIs an opportunity, a platform to come and really utilize what they have learned in FDI and LCIP and demonstrate their leadership abilities. And when I look at the great work that Nagraju has been doing for the last few years, it only reminds me of another quote. And when I look at Nagraju, it says that believe in your infinite potential. Your only limitation are those you set upon yourselves. And this is a quote by Roy Bennett that illustrates what Nagraju is inspiring and aspiring 
to do to build more leaders in our constitutional area. In fact, this year's program by our international president is Make Your Mark. And today, as I inaugurate this 22nd session of the Skills Up program, I can only say Nagaraju has made his mark. When we all finish listening to past international director Sunil Kumar, we will all say that yes, Sunil Kumar has made his mark as a speaker and delivering the subject matter in a very positive manner. And as we go along the year, make your mark is our president's theme. And what our international president is sharing or telling the lions of the world is that as we go along in our normal lionistic duties, leadership development, membership, service activities, anything and everything that we do in our Lions Clubs, in our districts, let's all make a mark, make an impact and make it known, not only to our Lions, but to the rest of our communities of what we are doing to make a mark in any sphere of Lionism. Of course, Sunil Kumar, at an appropriate time, will be talking to you about our major program of Lions Clubs International, and that is the Mission 1.5 program. This is the second year of our Mission 1.5 program, and this is one year, the second year, where we are all going to strive, put our hands together, our hearts together, our minds together, and work as a team to make sure that we succeed in Mission 1.5. And one of the things that is going to take us there and make us successful in bringing in new members into our clubs and making sure that we charter more clubs and retain more members, and that's going to be leadership development. It's going to be something that Skills Up is gearing up to do. In fact, when I looked at some of the sessions that have been planned, I, I, I was so happy that there are a couple of sessions that are focused directly or indirectly towards Mission 1.5. As the third international vice president, as many of you know, I have just been elected and I've completed my first month as the international third vice president. My campaign slogan was inspire service and ignite leadership. And as I'm going forward as an international third vice president, preparing in the next three years to become the next international president in 2027, this is going to be my focus as I plan on what my program is going to be. I Service is at the core of our association. And one of my programs is going to be around inspiring service. And the other part of my program is going to be towards igniting leadership. So this is just to share with you some of my thoughts as I prepare my year as a vice president and incoming international president in the coming years. I will have an opportunity to visit many of your districts in the next three years, talk to you, share my thoughts with you, and of course, at the same time, learn what is happening in your districts, multiple districts, and in your part of the world. This evening, I would just like to wish this session all the very best as I inaugurate it officially. And I want to conclude by sharing with you a beautiful leadership quote that I have been sharing with many over the years. And one of my favorite sayings is that if you really want to go up in leadership, don't think about going into the elevator, pressing the button, and the lift will take you to the 44th floor. Learn how to climb the stairs. And if you learn how to climb the stairs, I can only assure you, you will be an astute leader. And just to share with you a quote, to conclude, 
we do not need magic to transform our world. We carry all of the power we need inside ourselves already. So with this few words, I wish you all the very best and let's look forward to hearing past International Director Sunil Kumar's program. God bless you all and thank you once again, Nagaraju, for giving me this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Shall we all fill the screen with red hearts in recognition of the wonderful, powerful message that our Vice President Manoj Shah has given? So you can go to reactions and choose the red heart as a token of our love, of our appreciation, and all the commitment that he has given to lionism, the contribution that he has made. I think the two pillars on which lionism stands are the two calls that he has given. Service, I think the massive projects that he initiated in Kenya is proof of the way he is inspiring service and also the kind of training leadership workshops that he has organized at all levels, not only in our constitutional area, not only in constitutional area eight, which he was instrumental in creating and also all over the globe. So I think he has ignited leadership already. I think he has done extraordinarily well. We are very, very happy, sir, for your time. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you for your powerful message and also the insights that you've given us. All of us are willing to work along with you on any project that you take up this year, next year, and your term next year. Right. Thank you very much, sir. Thanks a lot. So I now invite our past international director, uh, GAT constitutional area leader, Lion R. Sunil Kumar, who has been some kind of a trailblazer across uh, the entire globe. I think he has been a very, very powerful orator, um, a very um, you know, well-known author, and um, I, I mean, the most popular trainer in the country and abroad, and many, many, many other things. He has been the constitutional area leader um, and as in that capacity, he has uh, started many, many creative initiatives. So some of the programs have become so very popular that I think uh, he is now known for them. Uh, he also is a well-known, uh, uh, popular uh, um, trainer, train, trainer of trainers. And uh, he, um, I think, published a book uh, about two years ago utilizing the time that he spent in a hospital. And I think there are quite a lot of things that I'd like to tell you about him, but let me not take his time and deny you of the opportunity to listen to him. Uh, over to past international director and GAT constitutional area leader, Sunil Kumar. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Lai Nagaraju, for asking me to be your opening batsman of this uh, New Year Skills Up series of programs that you have always organized before and continue to organize. I'm so delighted to be amidst all of you. To our third Vice President, sir, thank you very much for your very kind words. And actually, you have sparked off the beginning of my session by saying, don't depend on a lift to take you up climb stairs and that's the way you will really develop in life. What a wonderful statement you have made today, sir. You've always been known for making such very prolific statements and we are so proud of you. We all congratulate you once again, welcome you to this domain of uh, LCIPs and FDIs and this is a very unique group. I must mention to you, Vice President, that Lai Nagaraju started off this with a very important objective of getting people used to virtually uh, utilizing the opportunities available in this organization. Many, many of us were not even tuned to a virtual connect. And today, I'm so delighted that he consistently, very, very consistently continues his endeavor. And you can see 254 people coming together is not a small number. So it reflects popularity. It reflects a good cause that we have taken forward. And it reflects that that whatever initiative line Nagaraju has taken has paid off a lot of dividends for all the trainers and, and all the leaders of, of Isame particularly. What is even more inspiring is at these sessions, 
I have seen before and I see today, you have a lot of uh, uh, leaders from multiples other than Isami, from other parts of the world who join in and allow me to take this opportunity to welcome them as well. Lai Nagaraju, thank you once again for this uh, new series that you have commenced and thank you for your dedication. I.D. Babura, a very good friend and a director from my own multiple, from my own city. I'm so delighted that he takes out time at such events because he believes genuinely in helping people to always uh, promote the cause of learning. Dear friends, uh, Mission 1.5. Now, that would be my beginning. It's my beginning because it's related to my subject. It's my beginning because I keep telling everywhere I go that for the international board, it's a mission. But for all of us, it's a responsibility. And I know some of you are still unsure, and if I can use the word uncertain, whether do we, will we achieve it? Can we achieve it? Is this possible? It has been tried before. Will it happen? And we're just three years away from the deadline of 20th, 30th June 27. Now, this is a huge uncertainty ahead of us. And I think our questions must be rephrased, not to say, will this happen? But how can this happen? Now, when you, when you replace, will this happen, with how can we make this happen? I think it's a big relief to our thought process that it's upon us that it must happen. And I truly believe that when all of us can have a similar resolve, especially as, as leaders, as trainers, I think this is a mission that must be possible. So allow me to uh, start off with this mission 1.5 as not just promoting the cause, but at the same time trying to remind all of us that we are in a very special position, call it a position of a trainer or a leader, or the important role we play in lionism. And it must be a very connected responsibility, a responsibility mm -hmm. in which we should not shy away from and very loudly say, challenge accepted. And I believe that's the way forward. I come back to this session of mine, but allow me to mention before I show you a couple of my slides, why this thought has come, in, come to me to share this subject with you. Well, there are uncertain times all of us go through. When I published a book called Unlocking Uncertainties, and that was in 96 or 97, never did I realize that I would be one of those who would have to go through this uncertain situation myself. You all know that COVID came in a big way. And it was May 2020. I was again an opening batsman, so to say, because not many were impacted. And being a guy who keeps traveling all the while, somewhere I must have carried the virus and the contagious virus caught me. So when I started feeling the loss of energy every day and difficult breathing every day, well, I had no option but to rush to a hospital and was diagnosed for COVID. Not only that, when they uh, did a CT scan of my lungs, it revealed that it was they were having some patches and they said, look, it's at an initial stage and we need to address it immediately. And I was admitted to the hospital. I didn't realize that it would become so serious that I was uh, pushed into a ICU room. And when I was in that room, uh, believe you me, every day I could find that I needed someone to speak to and there's nobody there. The doctor used to come and speak to me from a door which was about 12 feet away. He was not even willing to come in. The nurses who came to take my blood used to ask me to come to the door and, and show my hand and they used to take my blood. They never used to come to my bed to take my blood because it was a fear scenario. And I don't blame them because there was no medicine. Uh, there was, at that point of time, there was no vaccine. And uh, I had a brother in US and a couple of cousins and nephews who were our doctors. And they started speaking to me and speaking to the doctors. And on the fifth day, I think uh, my son got a call saying 
that you need to deposit a couple of lakhs in the hospital. And he said, why? And he said, they said, no, we may need a ventilator because his oxygen level is shooting up. It, it was two, year, two liters two days ago. Then it went to three liters and now it's four liters. And when it touches five, we normally go for a, for a ventilator. So when he called up and shared that to me, that's when I started realizing what's wrong with me. It's not just COVID, but I think something within me is what needs to be altered. Something within me is what needs to be actually woken up so that I'm able to encounter this uncertainty. And all I did was being someone who's always on your laptop and the laptop traveled with me to my room. I used to tell my wife, whatever you pack, make sure my laptop stay with me. I just opened the laptop and started writing a book. I wanted a title for the book. And the title was Discover Comfort in Discomfort. Very clearly, that was the title. I said, I must discover comfort in discomfort. Without that, I wouldn't be able to survive the challenge of going through what I went through. And that was, believe you me, a, a, a huge, uh, it brought in so much of difference that that's the time I realized that I was gaining strength. In two or three days, I must have typed about 30, 40, 50 pages of the book. Later on, I titled the book, Waste My Couch and gave uh, Discover Comfort in Discomfort as a, as, a, as a bottom line. But why I'm saying this is, it's not common or maybe it's common that we need to anticipate uncertain situations. For some, it's not common. For some who anticipate uncertain uncertainties to be encountered, well, I think it's a way of living. So, dear friends, we talk about this subject from a perspective that we are all trainers and we have an image, an image worthy and we are very proud of this image. And as trainers, I believe what is very important for us is to start building confidence into ourselves that when there are challenges, even challenges in lionism, Challenges like Mission 1.5, challenges that may be economical, challenges that may be professional, challenges that may be of any kind that, you know, life presents before us. The big question is how do we react to these challenges? And that's the beginning of unlocking the uncertainty. How do we respond or react to a scenario that we confront from time to time? So uncertainty is inherent in life. It's all around us, never as much before as it exists today. So it's, it's something that you can't shy away from. All it tells us is stand up and face it, man. Come on, don't get bogged down by an uncertainty or an adversary. Do you run away from the situation or do you stand firm and fight it out? Because what lies ahead of us certainly remains uncertain. Dear friends, uh, in 1992, uh, I was doing a program called Nalanda. It was for 100 young leaders across the country. In fact, the 31st, 32nd of Nalanda just happened a while ago. I did about 12 or 13 of them. And in one of those events, out of my all trainer experience, I gave an exercise which was very simple, but we changed minds very powerfully. And the challenge I posed to the participants was, Write an epitaph. Take your time. Think for a while. And write an epitaph. We were all in Uti. And we were trying to... Any, people didn't know what an epitaph, epitaph was. I said, it's a phrase that's written on your tombstone. Right? When you're not around. And it's written to describe you briefly to the world who you were. And writing an epitaph was a game changer to my own self when I gave this exercise, lest did I realize it could cause that kind of a commotion within a person. That you are asking someone to write today something that can be inscribed on his or her tombstone at a point of time when he or she does not exist in the world. So my question to all of us today is how do we want to be known when we are not around? Very simple. I'm not asking you to write an epitaph. But I'm asking all of us to think, including me. How do we want to be known when we are not around? 
it's not guaranteed that we'll be around for a long period of time. But when we're not around, how should people refer to us? Would they call us good riddance? Or would they call us, my God, we miss him so much, we miss her so much. Now, that's something that all of us must really start rolling up our sleeves to identify how do we want to be known, and known when we are not around in this world. Now, we talk about uncertainty and I believe it's actually the refuge of hope. You talk about faith. What is faith all about? You say, I have faith in myself. Now, when you say, I have faith in myself, what are you trying to say? Well, faith means living with uncertainty. Feeling your way through life, letting your heart guide you like a lantern in the dark. So, there will be dark times. There surely will be dark times as we move forward. Maybe you're blessed if you aren't encountering them. But to believe that I may encounter such situations and proactively be prepared for it is what adds value to our living. It becomes even more important because we talk about uncertainties as opportunities. Some of us look at uncertainties as opportunities, adversaries as opportunities. We keep saying time and again, when a challenge strikes you, don't duck the challenge right away. Don't duck, the, don't duck the wave right away. I think it's very, very similar in life. You need to find a way to ride the wave, not duck the wave. So it can be an opportunity as well. There's a very nice quote. It says, the power of a lawyer is the uncertainty of law. The more uncertainty he or she can point out, the more convincing will be the arguments. So, so you don't have to be bogged down that uncertainty is going to come and kill you. No, 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 no. Don't ever allow that to happen. Uncertainty cannot make you weak. You're a trainer, man. Come on, stand up. You have to train people, right? And you have to first train yourself. And you can't be coughed down by challenges. If you say mission 1.5 is a big challenge, let's stand up and face it. Let's not look at the results. Let's stand up and try moving forward. I believe that's what it is all about. So this opportunity is something that we need to try and uh, try and get connected very, very, very emotionally with. We all go through very difficult situations in life sometimes. And the question is, how do we, how do we come out of these situations? The question is, am I, am I worthy of coming out of this situation? Maybe an even better question is, do I have the wherewithal to come out of this situation? So, dear friends, we are all challenged of growing up intrinsically. When I say intrinsically, within. We are not challenged of growing up. We are all challenged of growing up intrinsically. How aware are we about these challenges? Do we measure often? Do we, do we try and take out time? And I keep saying this to a, to a lot of my friends, that do we take out time to check as a trainer, you are an LCIP graduate, you are an FDI graduate, fantastic, I am one too. And for me, the measurement is how much of growth have I achieved in my last one year? Can people around me recognize that I speak better? Can people I am close to recognize that I speak something different, something new, something more in-depth than I was before? Am I trying to emerge as a visionary in life who can see far beyond what others can see? And if I am a good trainer, am I able to write down some thoughts which are very original thoughts, thoughts based upon my experience? And if I have a lot of experience, what is it that I do with my experience? I've said this before and allow me to say this. Experience is not what happens to you. Experience is not just what happens to you. It is what you do with what happens to you. So if we have experience, what do we, how do we use this experience? I think that's, that's very important in life. So that intrinsic growth, something that all of us must try and focus upon because it's very important. It's very important because it makes, it adds a lot of, value to our living. The turning point in the process of growing up is when you discover that core strength within you that survives all hurt. Right? This is, this is the unlocking uncertainty part of it. That we need to discover that core strength within us that can survive all hurt. Why should, why should, we, why should we be governed 
by the scenario that's around us. We should master the scenario that's around us. And why should we be running away from difficult times? We should face the difficult times. There's an African proverb. It says, smooth seas do not make skillful sailors. So if you want to be skillful in life, like Manoj Bhai said so well, he said, climb your stairs. And the moment you, it's a struggle of moving up the stairs, along with the struggle, there's a huge reward that comes to us. And I believe that's the reward we need to look forward to. So, unlocking uncertainties. What's the unlock? Is there one? Is there an unlock to an uncertainty? I believe there is. Now, Gautam Adani says, business is all about taking, all about risk taking and managing uncertainties and turbulence. So, any successful business must be equipped to manage uncertainties, must be equipped to manage turbulence. Now, why talk about business? Talk about individuals. We are not talking just about businesses. We are talking about we. Who are we? Well, we are traders. And who are we? We guide. We lead. We role model. We mentor. This is what we do. So, who are we? We are trainers. What do we do? We guide. We lead. We role model. We mentor. We live in a glass house. People are watching us. You can't talk about leadership development and be negative at the back end. You need to walk the talk because you're talking all the time. You're a trainer. You need to walk the talk. So we live in a glass house and people are watching us. Do we have a default mechanism built within us? I believe that's very important. And this default mechanism does not happen by luck. It happens by design. It doesn't happen by default. It happens when you want it to happen. So we need to create that backup in our mind, within us, so that we are able to encounter any challenge in life. So what is the unlock? Unlock is accept uncertainty as a way of life. That's the first unlock. Don't think there will be no uncertainty in my life. You're, you're blessed if you don't encounter any. But you can't rest on that premise. Accept that uncertainty as a way of life. Embrace it. Don't hesitate. Love it. That's fine. It's a way of life. And it's testing me. If I want to be skillful, then I need to have rough seas, right? Exactly. That's what it is all about. Proactively create that firm resolve within. Do we have that firm resolve within? Do we run away from situations or do we stand up and encounter them? The world's getting beyond the pandemic. Now, is that not a big lesson to us? I do a lot of uh, presentations across the world since I play a key role in the travel and tourism industry. I attend an IATA, which is the world's largest body of airlines, air transportation as they call it, International Association of Air Transport. And I keep debating with the airlines once every three months in Geneva or Madrid. That's where we meet. And it's a huge effort to go there and debate on behalf of the agency fraternity. And I'm glad that I've been one of those chosen to be on the Global Governing Council. It's called the PAPGJC, Passenger Ag Agency Program, Global Joint Council. So I am on that council for the last several years now. And every three, four months, I have to go there to debate with the airlines to say what's wrong with them. So I keep interacting with them and I see how well they have stood up and faced the uncertainty that ever came in. Not just the industry of travel and tourism, every single industry today has gone beyond the pre-COVID levels. Even you look at the share market, it's gone much above the pre-COVID levels. So it doesn't mean that COVID comes and kills you and goes away. No. It came in, we all stood firm, we fought it and today we are not just doing better, we are doing much better than we did before it was COVID. Take a look around your own self. Isn't that a fact? Isn't that a reality that we should emulate? That we can't be just falling down. We need to bounce back. And bouncing back is, is important. So dear friends, when you talk about what's the unlock, I would say confidently encounter uncertainties. We need to create a culture of resilience. It's very, very important. And you as a trainer must start looking at this more at this word called resilience. We unfortunately 
lack many of us lack this it's got to be a culture of resilience i think that's very important because when you encounter an uncertainty you need to unlock it and it can happen when you have when you have this gift of resilient within so if you and i start looking at uncertainty let's look at a few quotes that have come in to explain to us how we need to face them robert jordan wrote a book called the fires of heaven and he says the oak fought the wind and was broken the willow bent when it must and survived isn't that a beautiful quote the oak fought the wind and was broken the willow bent when it must and survived now what does it mean come on rigidity is not going to pay price is not going to reward you for the rest of your life there's something that we have to take home all the time as members of lions we network so well we greet at each other so well there's got to be a lot of positive positivity around us we talk about kindness matters which has become a big cue phrase for us every time lot of leaders talk about kindness first and now when we when we do all of this it tells us that humbleness humility ability to accept that i can get better i am not the best in the world ability to accept that there's a lot of learning that must still happen within me well i think this is what actually helps you graduate to a new level and when you graduate to the new level that's what it is so uncertainty to be unlocked can only happen uh, and and uh, dater uh, ashford has said if your react it's your reaction to adversity not adversity itself that determines how your life story will develop so how do we react when you encounter an uncertainty what matters is how do you react i started off with covid i could have been a very fearful guy i could have lost all my hope i could have lost all my faith i could have succumbed to the environment and maybe i wouldn't be there before you today right but what i did was i discovered that even in discomfort this comfort right you take the spelling of discomfort and remove this and this comfort so there is comfort in discomfort right so it's a very very inbuilt way to believe that it's up to us it's up to you up to me up to all of us because we've got a long way to go we've got a great mission ahead of us we all met last year i think it was sometime in february line nagaraju we all met at the refresher program of the lcip and fdi it was the second one line nagaraju did one in 2022 we did one in 2023 and hopefully we will do some something before in this fiscal year also so when we all get together there should be a lot of confidence that must become contagious not fear that must become contagious not doubts that must become contagious not weaknesses that become contagious there has to be strengths we have to accentuate the positive in us and i believe that's what we are actually uh, here for because we've got a huge responsibility uh, the glt goal i know how many of you are aware about the glt goal global leadership team goal we've talked about mission 1.5 we've had manoj bhai to talk about leadership development as well we we are right now in the process of leadership development where we are getting all the trainers together getting people to explore getting people to experience getting people to learn right and what is a global leadership development goal team goal it is to train one third of your members every year year after year year after year year after year that's a very clear cut glt goal and if you and i can get together and start moving out connect with the lions especially the new ones who are coming in i believe that 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 makes a big difference i love me to mention and if manoj bhai is still listening to us sir this is a very unique happening in india we had admitted 65000 new members during 23 24 sir 65000 new members and our isame secretariat did some fantastic work we asked them to get us the average age of those who joined us or at least identify how many of these 65000 are below 45 years of age and to our most pleasant surprise but it it was a surprise we were so excited in india manoj bhai that more than 40% of the members who've joined lionism in india during 23 24 are less than 45 years of age now this is a huge trend changer for all of us 
Now, when you are a trainer, your audience will be your biggest uncertainty. Your audience will be young people. As you move forward, remember this. When we talk about 40% of our admitted members, 65,000 are less than 45 years of age. Imagine what kind of an audience. So the question is, how relevant would you be, would you, how relevant would you be when you are addressing young people? You may be very relevant addressing seniors. You may be very relevant addressing people of your age. But when you are addressing young people, what is that relevance? I went through that exercise recently. Thanks to Akshit Bagla. Akshit Bagla was a Leo Lion board liaison, right? And, and what he did was, he had for the last couple of years been writing to the leadership division to allow us to conduct an exclusive FDI for Leos. It was not happening. Thankfully, after a lot of follow-up, and even I had the opportunity to write to the division, as a very special case, they approved an FDI for Leos. And FDI for Leos, and they also they gave a good grant to Akshit Bagla so that you don't burden the Leos too much. And when we did a train the trainer program, I've done a lot of FDIs. Like many of you have done FDIs as well. Some of us have done LCIPs. But when you were training Leos in train the trainer program, my God, it was a fantastic experience. You're interacting with fresh minds, creative minds, Minds that are more enthusiastic than many of us. Now, this is what I believe is one, how one must try and evolve in life. So when I say unlock uncertainties, my dear friends, all I'm asking you is to try and evolve yourself. Keep evolving. Become that Kaizen that Japanese taught us. Continuous improvement and consistent performance. Our improvement has to be continuous our performance has to be consistent. You can't perform now and not perform again. So you have to move on on a, on a path that actually brings a lot of uh, intrinsic growth within you, gives you the confidence and the courage to face situations that are very uncertain in life and at the same time helps you emerge as a better role model. So let, let me encourage you to be ready be proactively ready because uncertainties, as I said, are inherent in life. They are a way of living. Let's be strong and I wish you that you be very strong, you be very brave and surely you be fearless. You can't have fear crippling you down. All the very best and I'm here to address a few questions and thank you, Lai Nagaraju, for having given me this opportunity. Thank you, everybody else for joining today in such large numbers to allow me to do this presentation. Over to you, Lai Nagaraju. I see it's 9.54 and I'm a minute before the time that you've given. Thank you, PID Sunil, for all those insights that you've given us into lots of different aspects relating to lionism. And you've rightly pointed out the many things that we can do despite all the uncertainties that we have in our lives. I'm very happy that we have taken out time and then um, accepted to be the speaker this evening. Uh, so this is time for questions now. Uh, you can raise your virtual hand so that I'll unmute you. Uh, I think we have uh, time for about five or six questions. Uh, whoever raises the virtual hand first will be invited to speak. Uh, yeah, uh, the floor is open for questions now. You need to raise your virtual hand because I cannot see your physical hand. Go to the reactions and then Yeah, there is a question from Purushottam. Purushottam, I am unmuting you. So you can switch on your microphone. Yeah. Hello, sir. Yeah. Good evening, sir. This is a very uh, opportunity that we have got uh, listening the third vice president and our Sunil Kumar, sir, our great uh, leader for our uh, Hyderabad. And uh, we are enlightened with this uh, speech and we'll follow uh, whatever uh, they have told to us. Uh, I think the rest of them, please state, go to the question uh, so that there can be more participants. Vijay Lakshmi, I'm unmuting. Very good evening. 
It's always a pleasure to listen to Manish Shahji. And Sunil Garu, I have one question for you. What is the most uh, disturbing uncertainty you find in Lionism and how to tackle it? Do you find anything the uncertainty in this? Well, it's you. It's the way you see Lionism line, Vijay Lakshmi. Uh, sometimes I uh, I feel disappointed when when uh, people feel that um, we're not as exciting as we have been before. Well, I've been in Lionism for a long period of time. You know, I've been a Leo since 1971 and I've seen different shades of Lionism. I believe it's not that environment isn't exciting. It is that we as leaders or we as members, we are not ready to build an excitement when there is none. It's up to us how to keep the excitement happening. I would like to draw a reference to your own involvement in our multiple. And you've seen the kind of programs that we do. Why do we do all these programs? One after the other, one after the other, one after the other. Why should Nagaraju spend so much of time training people? The world never knew what CLLI was, right? It came from our multiple. And thanks to Lion Nagaraju, who played a big role, Club Lions Leadership Institute. Nobody heard about something called uh, Region and Zone Chair Certification Program. We had the courage to do it. There was a big question, why would people turn up? This is not a global certification. This is a local certification. We build value into the program. And we always, every time, get 85, 90, 92% to attend. We bring all the presidents of our multiple together. We call it Presidential Academy. I think there's one happening on the, I don't know, sometime very soon by Prakash Rao. And, and you see so many presidents from all over the multiple travel long distances to be present at that event. So uh, it's all in the way you look at Lionism and, and the, kind of, the kind of application of your experience you would like to invest. So uncertainty in Lionism, well, there could be many. But the point is, how do we wipe them out? The biggest problem of uncertainty is when it is there with you and you do nothing about it, when you do, when it is there in front of you and you do nothing about it, it becomes worse. So it's it's up to us how we can stand up, face this adversity. And there will be adversities, and many of them in life, but we need to stand up and correct them, take them forward. Membership retention. Will a member stay with us? Now, I think everybody keeps asking us this question. I keep asking this question that when you get hundreds of members into Lionism and you lose hundreds of members in Lionism, then why are the members coming in? Why are they going out? Now, have we genuinely made an effort to address this question? I think this is one uncertainty that we need to address. And we need to move forward. We need to unlock it. We can't have people coming in and going in. We can have numbers coming in and going out. No problem. But we can't have members coming in and going out. Thank you, Sanilji. I think unlocking uncertainties is not just relevant to lionism alone. It's a way to deal with our lives. So everything that happens to us uh, has to be handled from the perspective of our ability to unlock uh, the uncertainties. Ananda Kumari, do you have a question? Ananda Kumari, I have unmuted you. Are you able to hear me? Yes. 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 Uh, I think we have, you are logged in from two different devices, I think. Yes, sir. Yes. I have, I have yes. Sure. In the meanwhile, Dr. Shekhar, do you have a question? Yes. Hello? Yeah, yes, please go ahead. I'm audible. We can hear you, Dr. Shekhar. We can hear you. Right, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's something uh, uh, what I always feel when I listen about Mission 1.5 million that what are the other motivational tools rather than the only awards? Because we have declared a lot of awards for the 1.5 million uh, our mission. So, what is the other motivational tool? Uh, sh shall we confine to the topic today? Okay, okay. Dr. Shekhar will talk about this separately. Yeah. Anand Kumari, are you ready? Offline. We can do it offline. No Anand Kumari, please. Yes, sir. Are you able to hear me? Yeah, yes, please. Go ahead. Good evening to everyone. And it was a wonderful session. My question was also about 1.5. Uh, like uh, this year, we had lots of uh, minus 
The last year, governor had a plus growth and he got an award and then when he handed over to the current DG, it was a minus. Every time we are facing this challenge, how to overcome the, uh, the uh, region, the GAN, every one of us are stressed out. Uh, in, the, uh, in the beginning, we put so much of toil and end. The net result is not that rewarding, sir. How to overcome this, sir? Line on the line, Dr. Ananda Kumar, I think we'll take this question offline because line yeah. Nagaraju wants us to focus okay. on so let's subject, not to just in relation to Mission 1.5, but in relation to our growing up, our living, our, our, our emerging as better trainers than we are. So, Gala, do you have a question relating to the topic today? Yes, sir. I mean, uh, sir, talking about uh, Leo FDI training centers and all, no? So, but uh, I mean, uh, regarding the Leos only, I wanted to ask. Sir, uh, there is an option for the Leos who are not at all Leos early. Madam, can we do this? Uh, I referred that subject to say that when you, do you, do you need to be relevant as we move forward in life. So it was brought in on that context. But about how, about Leos, we can, we can take it separately, ma'am. We'll take it separately. Uh, Lion Verma, DV, DSCV Verma, please. Your question. Straight to the question, please. Sir, Varma thank Garu. you. Good evening. Good evening, Sunil. Verma Gar, Chappandi. See, that, uh, every year, you know, same thing you are facing. And you are saying, taking new members. You are unable to retain members. What is the focus on this 24-25? Verma <laughs> Garu, Nagaraj Garu, Mari Mari, he is telling us repeatedly, let us not yeah, talk about let's membership. Not... It was only a reference point. Ante. So please don't ask questions not related to the topic today. There are so many other areas and we are going to have topics related to membership growth also in course of time. Today, we are going to discuss about unlocking our uncertainties. Lion Sunil has made lots of different relevant points to us. And in case you have a question about any one of the points that he made, it would be useful for all of us. Uh, Lion Mukesh. Line Mukesh Bhargava, your question, please. Good evening. Uh, Good evening. As uh, Sunil Kumar sir have rightly pointed out, that uncertainty uncertainties are way of life. They throw up challenge, and but I mean, is there the only way? I mean, to keep fighting the challenge, or there is a system where we can reduce the uncertainties which are repeatedly coming over. Good, yeah, question, good question, Line Mukesh Bhargava. I'm so happy you asked that question. What I'm trying to address and present is, like I said, when uncertainty impacts us, how do you respond to this uncertainty? Do you allow it to become your master and you become the slave or you become the master and it becomes the slave? So do you have a culture of resilience built into you? What kind of a inbuilt mechanism you are creating today. We, as we move forward, we need to invest some part of our time to create within us some kind of a default mechanism which can address adversary or uncertainty that will surely come be confronted by us. So it is like a proactive approach to living. Proactive approach in a manner that as you're driving on the road, you may find a lot of potholes, but you must have a vehicle that has good shock absorbers. Otherwise, in any of the potholes, the vehicle can sink. So do we have those shock absorbers built into us? And if we don't have it, let's start creating them. If you're not proactive enough, let's start culturing. Let's start creating that culture of becoming proactive and not merely reactive in life. So I, I believe it must start, if it hasn't started within us, let's start it. Start off on it right away. That this, as we grow up, we must create that backup mechanism. Thank you. Yeah, it's our building our ability to unlock the uncertainties that have arisen, not a preemptive uh, strategy. Uh, Alain Girish, your question, please. Uh, thank you. Uh, Namaskara, Sunil Kumar Garu. Namaskara, Sir, Namaskara. You, you mentioned a very, very uh, striking uh, phrase, I would say, uncertainty is the refuge of hope. And I was immediately taken uh, by surprise. Uncertainty is the refuge of hope because it looks like a complete oxymoron. 
so uh, how does because hope comes when there is certainty when there is something tangible so how do you relate to this uncertainty is the refuse of hope sir well if you if you start interpreting that statement a little more deeply and connect it with what i mentioned immediately day after i said it's faith that starts off on a very positive note and it becomes a refuge of hope when your hope is weaker than the uncertainty in itself right so if your hope is weak and you have you have limited ability within you to encounter such big situations then automatically it has overtaken you it has mastered you and it has converted you into a smaller being than you are so live life king size that's what we keep saying time and again so life is not as you take it life is as you make it and i believe that's what we need to do with our life to make it so profoundly that it can withstand the tide of times thank you very much for that clarification and also that point that has been made uttam your question please yes, thank you nagarajul uh, namaskar sunil kumar sir this is uttam bhai boliye all the way from is... nepal yeah this is uh, past uh, district governor uttam ja former yes. leo as well so just i wanted to ask you a question that if i wanted to search the certainty within uncertainties what will be your suggestions say it again if you want to certain uh, yeah look if for i wanted to search the certainty within uncertainties what will be your suggestions okay every uncertainty has a certainty start believing in this point the certainty is that if you are not prepared for the uncertainty you get wiped out and the certainty is also that if you are prepared and you are ready to encounter the uncertainty the uncertainty is wiped off so it's all within you it's within us it's within us as to how we respond to that situation and that happens when you are living in a world of challenges a take home point is that let us spend some time of our living encountering challenges not merely driving on a smooth road driving on a road that is very rough only then will we become much more skillful in life so we need to get out of our comfort zones to build our resilience as i've mentioned to build our endurance within us we need to get out of our comfort zones and then try and start learning to live with discomfort situations and that makes you and me much better than who we are plan dr anil uh, sunil sir anil ji ha uh, sunil sir boliye bhai great great presentation very inspiring i have a small uh, question g that in every field you know now artificial intelligence is you know uh, uh, becoming a great challenge and it is because those type of uncertainties uh, cannot be anticipated in many fields what uh, uncertainties you can anticipate as per the training program or even service activities or fundraising or even marketing uh, of lionism what uh, challenges you anticipate because Uh, artificial intelligence is going to take over from who's created artificial intelligence anil ji did somebody else create or we created it ask yourself this question who created artificial intelligence it is now labeled globally on debates called man machine interface right man machine interface is a man better or machine better it's a never ending debate who created the machine the man created the machine what does the machine do the machine supports the man's work so it's something that you need to start learning to live with and optimize that opportunity managing optimization is the new phrase today we are not talking about managing time we are not talking about managing finance we are not just talking about managing people we are not talking just about managing you know something like what we always do we are talking about managing optimization so because of artificial intelligence that's come in i see it as a big opportunity and a lot of industries lot of people are getting benefited out of it so start looking at it as another tool which will help you to progress in a manner that you would feel you that you would feel excited with your what you can do what are we doing today anil ji what are we doing today we are on a zoom call 
we are doing a virtual training program what is this isn't this a beginning of an artificial intelligence yes, it is. isn't this the beginning of a man machine interface isn't this an opportunity now than a problem it was a problem when people could not log in it was a problem when people didn't know how to how to join and how to react on a screen but today it's become a way of life so we've evolved right and that evolution is what i'm aiming at and i'm asking all of you to evolve with times so you need to evolve as artificial intelligence keep coming in a bigger way thank you lance uh, the last question from lane abhay gandhi lane abhay you can unmute yourself yeah good evening all yeah good evening yes. go ahead yeah uh, my question is regarding that uh, uncertainties in business particularly to the finance part how to overcome what would be the suggestion from sunil sir thank you your question is very general when you say uncertainty is related to finance it again is related to some thought or some experience you have in mind right and that experience that you are going through has made you ask this question but all i can say is yes finance economy is an uncertainty but we need to learn how to have you, haven't you seen turnarounds aren't we witness to turnarounds aren't we witness to startups which never existed before aren't we witness to unicorns well all these are an outcome of new waves or new ways of thinking that people are associated with so gandhi ji abhay ji what i'm trying to say is well you have a particular question keeping finance as a background based on your experience but then i think that has to be investigated deeply but all i can say in general parlance is every uncertainty you need to be prepared for it you can't be bogged down by it full stop and nagarajo since you said it's the last question if with your permission i need to make a one minute one minute announcement that we've just started drafting the isame forum 2024 schedule and one of the sessions at the isame forum schedule is getting all the lcips and fdis together so i would encourage all the lc lcips and fdis to register for isame forum 24 and we'll all put together we want a lot of lcips we want a lot of lc fdis to join together as panels conduct sessions or whatever so please uh, Uh, let's get together one, and we would like to get together with all the FDIs and LCIPs who registered, so that we design their role at the Isami Forum. Thank you very much. Uh, I request all of you to offer a floral bouquet to uh, the speaker, Lion, uh, past international director, GAP constitutional area leader, Lion Sunil Kumar. In the meanwhile, while you are offering flowers to him, I request the chief guest, uh, in case he has any closing remarks, I request him to just say a few words. thank you thank you very much uh, <clears throat> nagaraju and uh, pid sunil kumar an outstanding presentation a lot of insight and i can see that uh, your conversation has initiated a lot of reaction from uh, the participants and uh, members uh, so thank you very much pid sunil kumar for sharing this very important subject matter also when uh, nagaraju opened up the question and answer session there was a lot of uh, enthusiasm or kind of uh, uh, willingness from the participants to talk about mission 1.5 to talk about membership to talk about the leo program but maybe uh, you being the ca leader maybe you could set up a separate forum such as this to allow people to ask questions to you know clear their minds any clarifications because this is a program like you rightly said pid sunil kumar we must make it work in this particular year nevertheless i think it's been a great session i wish you all the best as you go along uh, giving more leadership value to the lions of isame and i'm very happy to see that there are a lot of lions from around the world who are participating so a good job well done and i wish everybody a lovely evening thank you Vice Thank President, sir, Thank I you. take your suggestion, and very soon in the next fifteen days, would yes. send out a mailer to all the. Will I post it in this group of LCIPs and FDIs, and we would have a separate Mission One Point Five session with the current audience. Sir. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Thank you very much, everybody. With the next session on August fifteen, and LCIP line Maninder Singh Chandu is going to 
uh, speak to us on why lead. I invite Lion Maninder Singh to propose a formal vote of thanks and also invite everybody to hit section. Lion Maninder, I think you can, can you unmute yourself? I need to check one moment. Uh, do you mind raising a hand? I cannot locate you. Lion Maninder, oh, yeah, 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 I can see you here. Yes, yeah. What a wonderful session. Really, it's uh, amazing. I must place my first thank you to Lion Nagaraju, who has given us this opportunity to interact with such a mindful brain. And really, uh, talking with our third international vice president, Lion Manoj Shah, he's an amazing personality. I've interacted with Lion AP Singh, and after that, Lion Manoj Shah. I'm really impressed, and I'm very much thankful to his leadership that is going to get by the Lions International in coming years. He was recently in our district and I had a couple of uh, interaction with him and I'm very, very happy that he is a person who we deserve or who Lionism deserves. Thank you very much, sir, for your uh, great uh, opening here and what you have really given us guidance and your all uh, wonderful blessings to us. And we definitely, LCIPs, will definitely gear up and uh, do best in our time. And uh, listening to Sunil Kumar is always wonderful. I'm really thankful to you, sir, that you are always inspiration to all of us. And we always strive that we should do something and we should at least come nearer to you in our all life. Thank you very much to everybody who have attended this program. And I all welcome you to my session, which is going to be held on uh, 15th of August, the Independence Day of our country, the 15th of August. And my topic is uh, why lead? And uh, definitely I'm preparing for that. And I hope that all of you will join in that and inspire me to do more such type of session. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Thanks a lot. I thank the Leos also who helped me read out the code of ethics at the beginning of this session. Uh, so uh, please continue participating in this program. Before we close the meeting, I have a request everybody, all LCIPs are requested to support me by extending the invitation to all those who have a passion for training, a passion for learning, those who would like to upskill themselves. Upgrade. There are many in every district. And if we, each of us can reach 10 people, I think we'll have 700 people here. I think the platform is open to everybody. I think we need to uh, extend this invitation to all the uh, passionate, enthusiastic learners and trainers. So the next program is on August 15th. So the meeting is over, but I'll keep this Zoom open for another 10 minutes to greet each other. I'll allow everybody to unmute yourselves now. One second. Yeah, you all can unmute yourself and you can greet each other. You can say hello to each other. You can thank, congratulate. Thank you, Nagaraj. Sir. Sunil, sir, good evening. As usual, it is a wonderful session and informative. Nagaraj, sir, my Indian line is on in the Manoj Shagar. Thanks, sir. Thank you, 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 sir. Thank on behalf of everybody for giving your time. Mm -hmm. and for giving mm -hmm.